Hey, it's Feral Inferno, and today we are talking about a very special game. We are talking about Final Fantasy VI. Oh man, Final Fantasy VI. Really excited to talk about this game, but it's not going to be just Feral Inferno today. No, we are joined by three very special YouTube content creators. We're going to talk about who their favorite party is. Who are their favorite characters? Why are they their favorite characters? Is it because of their abilities or maybe personal attachments to their, these characters and their situations? Now, you may be asking, Pharaoh, why are you holding up a copy of Final Fantasy III for the Super Nintendo when you said Final Fantasy VI? Well, that's because Final Fantasy III is Final Fantasy VI. They're the same game. <laughs> so what happened was, Way back in the day, we only got Final Fantasies 1, 4, and 6. That's all we got here in the U.S. And it wasn't until Final Fantasy 7 that they righted the numbers. So they called Final Fantasy 2, or I should say Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 2 here. See, it's very confusing. <laughs> and they called Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 3. And then eventually we did get other ports and they righted the numbers for us as well, whether it's the Pixel Remasters, the ones for the GBA, for the Nintendo DS, and so on. They changed the numbering system so it reflected the numbers that were in Japan. So we, hey, now we can say, hey, it's Final Fantasy VI. But, you know, if you hear Final Fantasy III, they may be talking about this one. But, Pharaoh Inferno is going to stop rambling here and we're going to turn it over to our very first content creator to talk about what is the best party in Final Fantasy VI. Greetings everyone and welcome. It's Shelly and today Feral Inferno invited me over to the channel to talk about Final Fantasy VI, specifically the characters in which four I think make up the best party. So let's get right to it. In reference to the characters, all 14 of them, Final Fantasy VI is a unique game because there's not just one main character, there's several. In fact, one of those characters could easily be considered the face of the game. Because let's be for real, everybody knows when you think of Final Fantasy VI, you think of Mog. Terra is the true face of the game. She is one of two characters that naturally learns magic. What I mean by this is that she has access to magic before finding the Espers, which makes her extremely valuable during the World of Balance. She can equip Swords Heavy Armor, and her ATB gauge fills at about medium speed. So she's not as fast as Locke, but she's not Strago slow. Her Trance ability boosts both attack and magic attack, so she's definitely a top tier party member. Locke is your typical thief class, uh, I mean, a uh, treasure hunter. With Mug, he can attempt to steal items twice, which helps early in the world of balance, and his ATB gauge fills up fast. This helps if you need to get out of battle quickly, you can have him use a smoke grenade off top. Plus, that damage adds up with all those extra turns. He is extremely useful in the world of Ruin as well because he is the only character that can equip the Valiant Knife, which is his standard when you recruit him again from the Phoenix Cave. How you can use him varies between the two worlds, but whenever I have the opportunity, he's in my party. Okay, so if you've ever played Final Fantasy VI, then you know why this next character is in my party. Edgar is just a beast. His tools ability is so overpowered with drill and auto crossbow, he single-handedly will destroy everything on the screen. Not to mention he's one of the first characters you recruit in the world of balance. There's really not much else to say about Edgar other than he's the best. And finally, Celeste. You remember when I said Terra was one of two characters that can naturally use magic? Well, the other is Celeste. This, of course, makes her extremely useful in the world of balance. While her runic ability is more situational, she's got excellent magic attack stat, making spellcasting her best asset, while also being useful for healing as well. 
She's able to equip a wide range of equipment from swords and heavy armor to hats and light robes. Again, she's one of the best. A quick side note. Characters that can equip swords benefit from the effect of the Master Scroll, which is a useful relic found in the World of Ruin. That means spellcasters Terra and Celeste can deal decent physical damage should the situation call for it, and it's just another reason why they're in my top four. So, thanks so much Feral Inferno for having me on the channel to talk about my top four party members in Final Fantasy VI. For those of you watching, do you agree with my choices, or do you have a lineup that works better for you? Let us know in the comments, and take care everybody. What's going on guys? My name is Rad Bash, and special shout out to my buddy Feral Inferno for having me on this epic Final Fantasy collab. Now we were asked to talk about four members of a team in Final Fantasy VI that we really like, and so I wanted to take this opportunity because my brother and I share this love for this game, so I kind of want to talk about characters that meant a lot to both of us. More so from a story aspect, less of kind of what they do combat wise and things like that. Uh, because anybody who knows me knows I love a good story. So let's talk about it. The first character I want to talk about is Celeste. Celeste is a very prideful woman. Sometimes can be considered rude, very standoffish type thing, which, you know, I feel a lot of people can relate to. You know, a lot of us have the personality where we don't mean to come off mean or rude or anything like that. But it's just kind of how you know, guarded we are. And I think that's what Celeste is, a very guarded person. But she also has emotions, like most of us. When Celeste loses Sid, she attempts to kill herself. You know, I'm I'm not afraid to admit that I too have considered the option of, you know, taking my own life. When my brother passed, I didn't see much of an out and I attempted to do the same thing as Celeste. And that's why I think she's really relatable because I feel a lot of us have been in that position and kind of not seen any other option than to, you know, take that road. But it really just goes to show you that no matter how dark it may look, you will always overcome it. The next character I want to talk about is Strago. Now, don't let his appearance fool you. This old man is fun, goofy, things like that. And, I, you know, that personally relates to me because um, I've always been kind of the comedic relief, despite what you may think. You may think Rad's not very funny. But, uh, you know, in any friend group I've ever been in, I've always just kind of, I like to make people laugh. But again, just like with the last one, don't let that fool you. He can be sad. He can be serious. Strago ends up joining the cult of Kefka due to believing he lost somebody. And, you know, that really sticks with me because how many of us have given up hope and turned to things we knew we shouldn't, but did because it felt like the only option? Um, you know, and that, again, just like with the last character, I really like that they make these characters more believable, per se. Um, they have human emotions, you know, so when he joined the cult of Kafka, which he was against, it just goes to show you that anybody can give up hope and, you know, lose a little bit of everything. The next character I want to talk about is Locke. Now, Locke is your basic story-driven hero. Um, he's your upfront poster child, basically. You know, he's when you think of a hero, you think of Locke. Um, but Locke is also motivated by the loss of his lover, Rachel. Now, another relatable moment is how many of us have fought for somebody else? How many of us have fought to protect the people we love, to avenge the people we love? You know, and that, that really strikes me um, as a little different because, you know, with Back then, it was a lot of just, oh, I'm a hero, I'm going to go save the day because I can. This was a hero trying to make up for the guilt he had. He was trying to prove to himself that, you know, he could avenge her, he could bring her back, he could do things like that. And really, that's a very relatable, from what I feel, to a lot of us, because a lot of us have lost somebody we love and we're constantly trying to make them proud and, you know, do things that they would have done, if that makes sense. Enough sad rad. Uh, this last one is just purely out of old me, I guess. I had to go with Edgar. Now, so Edgar believes he is a ladies' man, and I like Edgar. Young, young, dumb rad thought I was a ladies' man and would flirt with everything under the sun. <laughs> uh, it was bad. <laughs> and, and that's Edgar. Edgar is, he's flirting with priests, he's flirting with the main characters. He just, he thinks he's a pretty boy. Um, and that was what I, you know, perceived myself. It didn't work out very well for me at all. But I always thought Edgar was kind of funny, just and, and I and I do believe it's because I thought 
that's me. You know, I can make fun of myself because, uh, you know, I'm I'm that uh, I try too hard kind of guy. Um, now, I am not a ladies man by any means. I am lucky to have gotten the girl I got. So <laughs> take note, gentlemen. Uh, it doesn't always work out. Sometimes it does. But be respectful to the women, fellas. I want to give a special shout out to my boy, Farrell Inferno. Again, thank you, bro, for having me on this. I can't wait to see what everybody else picked and kind of how they all relate to these characters. Uh, but like always, guys, thanks for watching this collab and stay radical. Hey, everyone. It's Fox from Inferno Fox Gaming. A huge thanks to Farrell for reaching out to me for this collaboration on what is my absolutely most favorite video game, Final Fantasy VI. I love discussing it, and when it comes to what the best team of four characters are, I have just one choice, and that's what I call the double date. Terra, Edgar, Locke, and Celez. These four characters probably get the most development within the story itself, thus we see them within the bounds of normal parties quite often. This is especially the case with Terra and Locke in the world of balance, and then Celez and Edgar in the world of ruin. Depending on how we play the game, Terra, Edgar, Locke, and Celez are very useful throughout the game. Terra is quite useful in the first half of the game, being one of the very few characters that can cast magic. As the game progresses and more characters gain the ability to cast magic by equipping Magicite and learning magic spells, the use of Terra's magic does get dampened down quite a bit, though she does have a high magic power stat. The trance ability she gains once she learns the truth of her magical origins from the, the Majwin Magicite can be useful if it is used correctly. The ability to use trance and the length of it during battle is dictated by the magic AP ability points that are gained when victorious after battles. If no AP is gained or a certain threshold is not reached by gaining this, then she can't perform trance. Both physical and magical damage output that Terra does during battle is doubled when in trance. Based on this and the magic AP based nature of the ability, it's best used for bosses. Terra and Celez are also the only two characters to gain magic spells at certain thresholds. On no Esper runs of the game, this makes them invaluable to have in the party. This means that Terra can cast Arise or Life 2 and Ultima and Celez can cast Hestega and Meteor with both getting access to Holy. Celez's ability to perform runic admittedly is a double-edged sword, no pun intended, as she catches both enemy and player spells, though she'd only catch Terra's ma magic on a no esper run. Beyond that and her magic, both Celez and Terra can equip heavy armor and swords on top of female-only equipment like the Minerva Bustier. Of course, Edgar can equip all of that too, except the female equipment, as well as spears. And while on the equipment train, Locke can equip a bit over half of the total swords in the game as well, including the Ultima weapon, Ragnarok, and Lightbringer, the, the Illumina. And he can equip daggers like the Valiant Knife and throwing weapons like the Wing Edge and Hawkeye. Locke can equip some heavy armor like the Genji set and Force Armor, but not as much heavy equipment as his other three party members. With him being a thief, or I, I, I mean treasure hunter, sorry Locke, not only gives him access to the steel ability, but also lighter equipment which can help accentuate his already high speed and evasion stats. Remember of course that if you're playing a version of Final Fantasy VI before the GBA one, the evasion stat is useless, and that physical and magic evasion together is determined by the magic evasion or M block percentage. Regarding Locke's steel ability, which can be changed to Mug by equipping the Thief Glove, I do admit steel does have limited capabilities, but it can still be useful on pov poverty runs, as well as to gank great finds from certain enemies and bosses, like the Celestriad or Economizer from the enemy Galyptes, also known as Aquila, in the Phoenix Cave. Locke can become an absolute wrecking ball when equipped with his Valiant Knife, the Ultima Weapon, a Master's Scroll Offering, and a Genji Glove. And finally, we have Edgar and his bag of tricks, or I suppose I should say a bag of tools. And he is one of the best characters in the game, at least in the first half of it. His tools can continue to be used endlessly, with no magic point cost or degradation of said tools. With six total available at the end of the World of Balance, and the last two being picked up at the end of the World of Ruin, there's no level ceiling or event needed like with Sabin's or Cyan's abilities. Without magic to fall on, these are great quick ways to damage all of the enemies at once with like the auto crossbow or flash, or 
cause large defense ignoring damage with the drill or 50% chance with the chainsaw. I could say Edgar sees his usefulness diminish later in the game as magic becomes king, but once we equip the Dragoon Boots and Dragon Horn accessories, Edgar takes back his crown. Because not only he and Mog can natively equip spears. If they get equipped with something like the Radiant or Aura Lance, damage from each jump attack gets doubled. While I'm not big on the extra dungeons from the GBA versions of the Final Fantasy series, I did run the Double Date crew through the Soul Shrine. With Terra and Celez casting quick, and Ultima spells with their Celestriad and Ribbon, Lockdua wielding the Valiant Knife and Ultima Weapon, and Edgar jumping with his Dragoon Boots and Dragon Horn. Every turn from each character was at least 20,000 damage on poor hapless enemies like the Omega Weapon. And this is why Terra, Edgar, Slaz, and Locke is the best team together in Final Fantasy VI. Thanks again to Feral Inferno for letting me join this fun collab. I've been Fox from Inferno Fox Gaming, of which you can catch me on my YouTube channel of the same name. So, who are Feral Inferno's favorite characters and the best party in Final Fantasy VI? Well, to no surprise, it's actually Terra. It's Locke. It's Celis. <laughs> and Edgar, uh, or as Inferno Fox called them, the Double Date. Uh, so I, I, I like these. These are my four favorite characters that I use, uh, and I knew that these were going to be four very popular characters. So I prepared ahead of time the first party that I used when I played Final Fantasy VI back in the 90s. So back in the 90s, I kind of went with the characters that I thought were really cool and hard to get and the really unique. Uh, and on the very cover of the game, we see, you know, we got Mog here, the Mughal, right? The Mughal's right here on the cover. I'm like, hey, is he the main character? That's kind of what I thought. He was on the, all the promotional images. He was in the commercial. He was on the posters. He's on the CD soundtrack. <laughs> and hey, he's like a little cat creature. I love cats. So I was like, I, I had to have Mog on the team. He's such a cool, it was such a cool sprite as well. Uh, and he used spears. Uh, he could use the aura spear, so that was really great. And he, very random, very random with his dance moves. And it was kind of cool to just kind of use him and try some of these kubu dances where, you know, it could be, hey, maybe you're getting the landslide, or maybe you're going to get uh, something that's going to heal the whole party. So for me as a kid, I thought that was kind of cool. Next up was Setzer. And Setzer was the guy who was, you know, in charge of the airships, and he's the gambler, and he's got the trench coat on, and who did he remind me of? He reminded me of Gambit from the X-Men, who was my, one of my favorite characters anyways, from the X-Men, and hey, Gambit was a ladies' man, this guy, he likes the ladies, so hey, I had to go with Setzer. Uh, and I thought it was, and hey, even more like Gambit, what did he throw? He throws playing cards. He is Gambit. <laughs> we had these other bonus characters. Now, Mog was a bonus character, right? So, yeah, Mog was a kind of, you know, bonus character because you didn't necessarily have to get Mog. You had some choices to make when you got Mog. Uh, and Mog led to a second bonus character, and that was Umaro, the big abominable snowman. Uh, and you couldn't control him. He was uncontrollable. He was in rage mode the entire time. But dude, he was so strong. He had the highest strength stat in the game. Uh, and you could equip only certain things on him, but you could equip an accessory. It's called the uh, Blizzard Orb, I believe. And the Blizzard Orb would have like this, like you know, big snowy attack. It was like a magical attack, so he could still have some magical abilities. Uh, and then I had to go with a really cool bonus character, the Man of Mystery, Gogo. Gogo, while his stats are absolutely terrible, and if I remember correctly, the worst stats in the game. Uh, one of the really cool things about him was that he can mimic everybody else's abilities. And what people didn't know was like, hey, all he had was in his command menu was like pretty much was mimic and item. But if you went to the status screen and you clicked on the little main menu that they show on there, you can edit his commands. So you could put in runic. You know, he could do Celis's runic where he absorbs magic. He could use magic. He could use Edgar's tools. He could do Sabin's blitz moves. He could do Bog's dances. He could do Setzer's slots. He could do anybody's moves. 
He was awesome. And I'm coming off of Final Fantasy IV, and when I found out that in Final Fantasy VI, Gogo had his desperation move, so all characters have not, it's not a uh, limit break so much, but it's called the desperation move, is when your HP gets super low, you do this desperation move, it's totally at random. And his was X Medio. And I was like, oh, Medio? was short for Meteor, because they didn't have enough characters, I guess, for Final Fantasy IV, but they called it X Medio. I'm like, Medio's in the game? I've got Go Go on the team. <laughs> so while I've matured over the years and now have more story-based characters in Final Fantasy VI, with uh, Terra, Locke, and Salas, and Edgar, uh, I really, really liked that team growing up. Um, so yeah, let me know what your favorite party is in the comments for Final Fantasy, well, if you know it's three or if you knew it as six, we'll know what you're talking about. You can call it either one that you want. <laughs> Let us know who your favorite characters were and your experiences with the game in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining us on this awesome collaboration. I want to thank Inferno Fox, Red Bash Gaming, and Shelly Switch Deck for participating and providing such great segments and heartfelt segments for the characters that they are the closest to and think are the best characters. Thank you so much, everyone, and until next time, take care.